Puerto Rico has been undergoing a crisis for over 11 years, starting in 2006 dramatically. And obviously the hurricane just deepened that crisis. The state government and many of the municipalities have either collapsed because they don't have the capacity to operate emergency because of the lack of resources that we have on the ground. And also it's been kind of like a hands down, let FEMA come in and, and take care of us. But FEMA has been withholding aid and deploying people into assignments, but they're not going really into the communities. They've lied about the access to communities. So in the absence of a state and federal government, people have started to come together. The bureaucracy and red tape and protocols on the ground set by FEMA and Red Cross have been creating a lot of difficulties and, and barriers between the people and the, the resources that they need. I think a lot of the times before NGOs go in to do an action, they have to consider how it's going to fall upon the ears and the sensibilities of their keepers, of their funders. We don't have that responsibility. We think about the way the thing that we're seeking to do is going to impact the community, who's going to benefit from it, and if there is an actual need. If we can come to a consensus that that is true, then we go and we do the damn thing. Everywhere we go throughout the island, the stories is the same. People on the ground, neighbors coming together to clean their neighborhoods, to help feed other folks in the neighborhoods when the aid is not coming in, trying to pull together resources to have collective kitchens and collective meals. Um, and it's been an incredible amount of solidarity, both from outside Puerto Rico, but also especially within folks in the communities, because it's based out of need. So now you have to talk to your neighbor because you have to share the rice and the beans so you can cook something together, and you happen to be the one with the gas stove. So this has resulted in, in, in some spaces that are called Centro de Apoyo Mutuo, centers of mutual support that vary from uh, social kitchens or collective kitchens where folks come to eat to places where people can come uh, to drop off stuff so it can get distributed to communities that have little to no communication. Even FEMA had mentioned the model of uh, like Common Ground Relief Collective that as that being like a, that decentralized model being a way to get mass resources to people like quickly, you know, um, uh, immediately rather than waiting for government bodies to respond. So there's decentralized groups on the ground now that are destroying food and getting getting supplies out to people because FEMA's reporting that they have give out 200,000 meals a day in a place where there's millions of people. And that's like one meal a day for 200,000 people. So they're, they're sorely failing. So we're like daring to believe that we could render the state and these NGOs like as unnecessary by just being on the ground and responding to people directly. So in that way, decentralized methods are like, we're able to circulate more easily. We're able to get intel around the, the island better. We're able to, um, you know, more directly communicate with people rather than treating them like they're passive receivers of aid, like they're consumers and treating them like they're human beings and listening to them. It's been a challenge also the lack of communication, so we have to actually go to places. It's been a challenge also for us, the lack of transportation, the fact that because we are poor and working class, we really don't have adequate vehicles. So we've eventually gotten a rental and try to get to places and, and take stuff directly to folks that we haven't heard from yet, who are the ones in most need. But the challenges of transportation, communication, and also money. The fact that we can't access, even with donations, we can't access because it's so hard to get even money from the banks. Uh, the mail is pretty practically paralyzed or working at a very, very low level because of the damage of the hurricane and the systems are down. So even the mail is an issue and we're an island. So people with money fly in planes with aid, but working class folk can't do that. So it's really been about pulling resources. What do we already have? And finding solidarity with some, even some sympathizers at you know, at all levels, from business owners to truck drivers to folks that are ready to, to help us and us being able to have the connections because we've been with the folks that had to do the frontline work. And it's been a challenge, but it's been a necessary challenge because if not, nothing will get to a lot of our communities because the way they're not connected to the political structures on the island. People at first were waiting for the government to, you know, thinking the government would come and respond to their needs. But once they saw that it wasn't coming, they started joining together, organizing kitchen, uh, you know, getting community aid out and then connecting with other networks that were, you know, trying to get the word out of what people in their areas and rural municipalities were in need of. There's this like fear mongering that society is going to break out and we're going to have to have the government come in and police us. I mean, well, that's absurd because the government, when they come in, they're usually taking and not giving. And what I've seen here is people giving to each other. From the airport, every single place that I've been in, I've seen people pouring out the milk of human kindness to each other. 
So yes, the solidarity has been immense and it's the first steps of, of a popular power that's gonna build because of folks coming together in absence of a state and a military uh, occupation by the U.S.